got something different for you today, folks. This <laughs> is a keyboard, Keychron Q1HE, but this is not just any keyboard, it's $500. And Keychron saw that I have a DGX Spark and I've been doing videos about it. And they reached out to me and said, hey, look at that, it matches. You should have one. <laughs> Okay. Now they're not paying me for this video at all. I just thought this is a very unique kind of thing. It's got Hall Effect, just like this other keyboard I've been using for a while. It's the Q1, just like this other keyboard I've been using for a while. And I like both of these keyboards, although they feel a little bit different. Here's the Q1. It's probably my favorite one that I've been using. It's heavy, not portable. This is the Q1HE. The Hall Effect version. I got it hooked up to the DGX Spark now, that's why it's beeping. Oh, I'm not a keyboard nerd or anything like that. I don't know much about them. I just kind of like the way this keyboard feels. This is the regular one. The Hall Effect is magnetic, so it can respond faster. To be honest, I haven't noticed much of a difference in my day-to-day, -day, but if you're a gamer, I hear there's a big difference. And also for portability, I've been using the K7 keyboard. It's really small, really flat. Not quite the same, but Still, it's got a little bit of that mechanical feel, which I kind of like, and I take this with me sometimes. Remember when I said that the Q1 was heavy? Well, it is metal, so it should be. But this one is copper, and when I first held this thing, <laughs> well, let me just show you. I haven't actually weighed it yet, but here's the Q1. 1.7 kilograms. Here's the Q1HE, 1.8 kilograms. And here is the copper edition. By the way, they're all the same size, a 75%. 4.6 kilograms. Yeah, this thing is heavy. It's also Hall Effect. It's got a double gasket design, 1000 hertz polling rate, and you can pair up to three devices. 22 light effects that you can pick from if you care about that kind of thing. I must have been living under a rock huh? because whenever I traveled, I had this whole ritual. Grab all the files, make sure the home lab's okay. Are you okay? Rebuild my dev environment on a laptop. And if something went wrong, connecting to my office machines was fragile at best and often just failed. I've just tried the Comet PoE KVM from today's sponsor, GL.inet, and it was like a light bulb switched on. I don't have to recreate my setup. I can just sit in front of my machines from anywhere. By the way, I actually liked it so much that I ordered a bunch more of them for all my machines machines in my mini rack. This tiny box gives me hardware level control even if the OS is frozen or is sitting in the BIOS. I can power cycle it and all without installing anything on the machine itself. This little box does one thing, it does exactly what it says it will and it does it really well. When it's sitting on the desk, it's simple. A single PoE cable handles power and network, plus HDMI and USB-C to the computer, no extra power brick and way less cable clutter. Perfect for a clean desk setup or that extra dev box under the desk. The video feed is 4K low latency H.264 stream so remote debugging feels like I'm sitting in front of the machine. And when I'm away from my office I just use GL.inet's built-in cloud VPN or one-click tail scale for secure lifetime access. No port forwarding, no subscriptions, no weird network setups. If you want a cleaner desk and true main rig from anywhere access check out the Comet PoE KVM from GL.inet. Link in the description. Now, like I mentioned, I'm not a keyboard reviewer, nor do I want to be one, uh, but this was a really interesting one, so I thought I'd share. I keep thinking I'm gonna drop this on my toes. That would not be good. I'd be going to the hospital immediately. Look at this thing. Cable, adapters, keycap removers, extra keycaps, tools. I've never had to use that stuff because I don't do that. I just use it the way it comes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is like holding, wow. It's 4.6 kilograms with a box and all. Naked, it's four kilograms. Eight pounds, 15 ounces. That's because it's not just metal, it's copper. What do you think, does this match my EGX Spark? Close, not quite, but close. I think it'll look good next to it. They're in the same price range. By the way, since I have been getting into keyboards, I wanna mention this one as well. This is a ceramic keyboard and the keys are actually ceramic. It's pretty heavy for what it is. I'm not a huge fan of missing the function row though. I know that on my portable one I do, and it's easy to go around that. You just press function and then the key, but still it's an extra thing you gotta do. This one feels a bit different. 
I like the way it sounds. Not sure what ceramic will accomplish, except it's supposed to feel cooler on the fingers. However, because it is ceramic, it might not pass signals through very well. Maybe that's just my assumption, I guess, which is why they have it wired. So it's a wired keyboard. I keep it over there now for that station. These are all wireless. Oh my God, this thing is heavy. They work over the G USB cable or Bluetooth. G meaning they work with uh, the adapter, the old school adapters, which are still USB A. Come on. I seriously, every time I pick this up, I'm surprised. Now, what about the feel of the keyboard as I type? Here's the sound. Should we give this keyboard a name? What name would you suggest? Leave a comment down below. I feel like it needs a royal name because it looks like gold. Some people like gold a lot. I'm, I have a name in mind, but I'm not gonna tell you right now. Leave a comment down below <laughs> and don't get my channel banned. All right, Spark plugged in. We're on G. There's Windows and Mac settings here, but they don't have a Linux setting, which is what I'm on, but Windows will work for that. Pretty cool. There's a knob here. You can probably set it to whatever you want. I just keep it on default and it clicks too. See how technical I am with my keyboard analysis. To me, it just matters that it types well, that I can hit all the keys. I don't need to readjust too much. Nice. Seems to work pretty well. Now the Q1HE is not a cheap keyboard already. It's already at 200 bucks. Would I have bought the keyboard? I wouldn't have bought it unless I tried it out and was using it for as long as I have now. I've probably had it for about a, more than a year now at this point. I would probably spend 150 bucks on something like this. That's the regular Q1. The HE doesn't really do much for me, so if it costs extra, I probably would not spend it. But the copper edition, I certainly would not spend $500 on that. Um, so thanks to Keychron for sending it to me for free <laughs> to try out. Hey, maybe next year I'll change my mind after using this thing for a while. And here it is, Keychron Q1 HE QMK Wireless Custom Keyboard Copper Edition. Gatoron Double Rail Magnetic Nebula Switch. Sounds fancy. I mean, all these keyboards that I've showed you, the Q1 version, they're all really, really solid. I never hear anything, any rattling, any shaking out of them. They're heavy, they're sit on your desk, they don't flop around. I like them. This one is obviously extra special because it's a full copper body. It's got the magnetic switches. It's got the 2.4 gigahertz connection, which is what I'm using it as right now. Ooh, yeah, I didn't notice that initially, but it's got the alternating black and gold for the F keys. I guess they all kind of have the alternating ones. I never noticed that, but uh, you know, I don't really pay attention to the keyboard that much. But that's good. I think that's a good thing when you are using a tool and the tool doesn't get in the way. You're not noticing using the tool, you're just using it to get the job done, which is how I think it's supposed to be. My light just blew out in case you're wondering what happened. Or if there's any links to sales or anything on the older ones, I'll leave them down below in the description. But that's pretty much it. Got any questions? Let me know in the comments. I'll be checking them. Thanks for watching. See you next time.